Hey guys, Paul ISM. Welcome to another video build. Today we're going to be building ALF models 124 for Audi RS7 Sportback. So yes, another Alpha Models kit. Um, this is a brand new one sent to me very recently by Alpha Models for free. So kind of obligated to build this one. And to be honest, I do like cars like this. Big, fast, four-door saloons. Yeah, I got a little bit of a thing for it. It's a bit of a, an odd one, this one being a Sportback. It's almost like a coupe four-door. But great-looking car nonetheless and a very impressive machine too. So I've already reviewed the kit. It's further back on the channel if you go back. And uh, like I say, I thought, yeah, do you know what? Let's get it built. Let's get it done and get it built. So here we are today. Uh, I've picked my colour. You're going to see that very shortly. We're going to get this prepped, primed, painted, and clear-coated today. So let's jump straight in with the build and get started. Right then, so the Alpha Models 124 Audi RS7 Sportback. Now... I have a review of this. It's further back on the channel. If you go and have a look, it's a full inbox review. Um, so no quick look through the box like I normally do. Uh, it's a resin multimedia kit. So lots of resin, lots of photo etch, acetate for the windows. Whilst not the easiest kit to build, the more of these you build, the less daunting they become. And my biggest advice is two things. Number one, test fit every single part before you commit. Uh, and number two, make sure you check off you've got every single part before you start um, I go through the box as soon as I get the kits and double check everything is there before I commit to even starting these builds there's lots of resin like I say lots of photo etch you get screws you get loads of decals they're quite a comprehensive kit they're not cheap at all they're usually around the 150 pound mark but in my experience they've mostly been good fun to build and fairly straightforward the only downside to these kits is the instructions they are to be taken with a pinch of salt because they are not really instructions they are a very vague assembly guide so what i'm doing first of all is i'm looking for all the parts that need to be painted in body color so that's a lower part of the mirrors uh the body shell door handles and then we've got several other parts a front splitter a rear kind of diffuser and two side skirts are going to be carboned as well they're the parts I'm going to deal with first off now the body shell is nice and clean on this. All I'm going to do is run my Holly 0.02 uh, millimeter scriber for all the panel lines, just to clear them all out, make sure there's nothing in there, and just add a little bit of depth to them. They are more than adequate, but I always do this as a matter of course. Uh, confidence is key when rescribing, and having the best scribing tool at hand is also beneficial. And in my opinion, these Holly ones offer the ultimate control. Uh, you can only really get them from the Far East, so get on e uh, face uh, Google, sorry, uh, just search for Holly Scribers, and you should be able to find them. Because they're fingertip, fingertip control, they are very, very precise in their use. So just go around and rescribe all the panel lines. Every single one just gets a very, like, couple of scribes down it. Be careful not to slip. Resin is very easy to mark, and you have to spend time fixing your mistakes and so take some care here and just take your time working your way around the entire body it's a big chunk of resin this one so be careful uh when you're done i like to get an old toothbrush and just go for all the panel lines get any dust out of there any debris that may be left behind and this is all the preparation uh which is key in my opinion for priming so we're just going to prepare the surface so we cleaned out all our panel lines we cleaned them out with the toothbrush we can now scribe uh sorry we can now uh, scrub all the bodywork up with a Tamiya 2000 grit sponge. Uh, this will key the resin. It'll get rid of any impurities off the top of the resin as well. There's not a lot on this resin. It is very good out of the box. Uh, but I always scuff it up. Just basically take the shine off the resin. Uh, it gives the primer a nice key to uh, grab a hold of. And also gets rid of, like I said, there's any imperfections on the body. Uh, this will help get rid of them too. So just all around the body, nice and gently. We're not trying to reprofile anything or reshape it. We're just trying to get a nice keyed surface on the body. So the Tamiya sponges are my weapons of choice for this. I used to use the 3000, but I'm finding the 2000 much more uh, applicable for this now. I did spot a couple of lines I forgot to scribe. 
So we'll do those while we're here as well. Like I say, just take your time rescribing. It's very easy to make a lot of work for yourself. So you're better off taking your time scribing in the first place. With that done, we've got some carbon parts. So just double checking which way around these go and that they're actually going to fit. Uh, there's a bit of debris in where the side skirt sits. So I've got one of my master tools chisels, just taking away a little bit of the resin that's in the way. And then a quick test fit, just having a look. That looks like that'll fit in there just fine. Not bad at all. Leaving the mounting points on to now to spray. This one, a little bit warped. You can see a bit of a bend in it. It's kind of banana itself a little bit. So the heat guns are perfect for this job. You just got to be very careful. Apply a little bit of heat, test it. A little bit more, test it. Yes, that is hot pull. Uh, and just keep going around until you're happy. Because all of a sudden, it will become very malleable. And if you're not careful, you can literally melt it. So just heat it up, test a bit. Heat it up, test a bit. I don't know what I was doing there, then I think I might be tasting it. Oh, and I'm testing the air there, it's hot as well. So yeah, just hold on for a bit, and it literally will become as soft as putty. There we go. We could straighten it up, and then a little tip, put it in place, push it into its shape, and just hold it for a second while it cools. And there we go. The front splitter fits on perfectly. No problems there at all. And this rear kind of, well, it's a diffuser surround, is it, I suppose? Very, very uh, delicate piece of resin. A little bit of care needed here. So I'm just making sure it offers up to where it's mounted. It is a bit springy, but it does line up well. So that will do me. I know once it's painted and decaled, I can get it in shape, no problem at all. And there we go. So we've got some Pro Scale Paints pre-paint degreaser. And this is the ideal uh, solution for degreasing the bodies. Alcohol based, rub it over, uh, it evaporates and then wipe it off with a dry bit of tissue and it will leave a perfectly prepared surface behind. So this will get rid of any fingerprints, any crisp chip dust that's left behind from eating, chock of fingerprints. You know what happens while you're modeling and eating and doing stuff. Uh, so this will get any impurities off the resin, as well as from the mold process as well. Uh, resin can have mold release on it, you can often see it. So this is just another step in ensuring we've got the perfect surface in preparation for our primer. So just be thorough all over the body, in around all the nooks and crannies, wheel arches, so on and so forth. Just to make sure everything is nice and clean. All these ProScale products can be bought from www.proscalepaints.uk. Go to our website, there's a link down below, and you can get them there. Time your anti-static brush, get the model a dust over to get any dust off there. We've got ProScale Paints uh, Grey Primer. So we're going to put several coats of this down. This is my Eyewater Revolution CR3. It's a 0.3mm uh, uh, Eyewater Airbrush. In my opinion, it's ideal needle size for our primers, and the grey, not the light grey, the grey is the perfect base for our purple Merlin uh, Audi paint. So like I say, several coats of this going down, paying attention to all those wheel arches, windows, grills, vents, everywhere. Just making sure we get it all covered. We're not hosing it on, we're not trying to get it covered in one go. We're just putting nice, even, overlapping coats on. Uh, we don't need to go mad, there's no point. This is a microfilling primer, so it'll need flatten back at the end. So it does drive a little bit of a texture, which is the idea of it, because it will fill any imp uh, imperfections in the body. But once it's dry, we can flat it back and get it nice and smooth.
And there we go, three coats of our primer, and it's looking absolutely spot on. A little bit more just on the bonnet there, just a quick spray over the roof as well. And there we go. Of course, I'm also priming the other body part as well, the lower wing mirrors and the door handles off camera. They're all primed at the same time, but for speed, I just do it like this separately. It's easier. We've got some Mr. Surfer 1500 black, and we're going to prime the side skirts, um, the rear volant, uh, sorry, diffuser surround, and the front splitter as well. So they're all going to be primed in Mr. Surfer 1500 black prior to being uh, carbon fibered. So a couple of light coats of this, same airbrush, I want to see our three. And there we go. We're allowed to prime to dry for a good six hours or so. And we're back with a Tamiya 3000 grit sponge this time. And we're just going to flat back the primer. We're not trying to sand through it. We're literally just taking the very top surface of the primer off. And where you've got that slight textured feel from the primer out the airbrush, what quick run over with the sander sponges, this will be silky, silky smooth. Just remember when you're done to wipe over with a clean bit of tissue and give all the panel lines a wipe over with the toothbrush as well to get any dust out of them. But again, an important step to do because this is the perfect preparation for a great paint job, basically. So the better job you do here, the better the end result will be on your paintwork. So it's time well spent. Like I say, once you're done, get your toothbrush in and around all those panel lines, windows, door shuts, everywhere, and get any dust or debris out. And before you commit to painting, I give it a blow over with some air from the airbrush as well. So like I said, we've got Pro Scale Paint Audi Merlin Purple. So this is a pre-mixed lacquer paint, straight into the airbrush, 20 odd PSI, light coats, really light coats building it up, and this will give you a perfect paint job. Uh, all our metallic flakes are scaled as small as possible to be in true 124th, 125th scale. And like I say, a single stage uh, lacquer, pre-thinned, ready to go. Uh, they do dry satin, so it will need clear coating afterwards. Uh, and all our paints are perfectly color matched to the recommended uh, manufacturer codes. So like I say, this is the color I've chosen for this car. Uh, it's a very, very deep purple, especially depending on the light. You'll see when we're painting here, uh, as soon as it's clear coated, it goes very, very dark. Uh, but when I get some video of it at the end, you can see that it's much lighter once it gets some light on it and the metallic pigments come alive. Now, make sure you thoroughly shake the bottle up. These do need mix, and they do settle and separate a little bit, so give them a good shake up. As you can see, I'm using a pipette to decamp from the bottle to the airbrush. That way you don't get paint clogging up all the threads on the bottle lids, and the color cap goes on the airbrush as well. I've learned this lesson many times now. I'm just spilling paint everywhere, and in worst case, on the model, which I have done in the past, We've got a glove on to protect my hand from paint. I've got my spray booth on and my respirator on as well. Same airbrush, I want a Revolution CR3, 0.3 mil. We're about 18 PSI. And we're going to put about seven or eight very, very light coats of paint on the model. So, like I say, we've dusted it over with our toothbrush. We've gone over with our anti-static brush again. And I've done a quick blast of air with the airbrush. Now, as you see... We're not hosing the paint on, we're just doing nice thin overlapping passes as we go. Just building it up. We don't need to go crazy at all. As you see, we start to get the colour, get the wheel arches done as well, get all those lower sills done and all around the windows. I always do this top spray at the end and over the sills at the bottom as well. It's just a case of going around the body systematically getting a nice, light, even coat all over. And then put to one side, let it flash off for five, 10 minutes, and you come back with another coat. Of course, we're doing the wing mirrors and the door handles as we go as well. And while I'm painting this, I'm gonna pop some music on, and I'll be back in a second.
And there we go. I would say that's about eight coats of paint. Nice and light, alternating crisscross patterns. So one time we go side to side, left to right, and the next one we go up and down. You can see the depth of color. The purple looks absolutely fantastic. A beautiful, vibrant purple. And it's laid down absolutely perfectly. So let's put to one side for a few hours to dry. And we're going to come back with Tammy's enamel-based panel line wash. What we're going to do is we're going to highlight all the panel lines, all the door shuts, bonnet shuts, the boot lid, anywhere and everywhere. If it will hold a wash, and it's getting a wash, basically. Uh, this being enamel-based, it doesn't react with the lacquer at all. It's a case of just touching where you want the wash to go, and the capillary action will carry it through. Give it about half an hour, and you can come back in with uh, some kitchen paper or a cotton bud with some odorless mineral spirits on. It's really easy to remove. And it just adds a little bit of depth to the model. So just be thorough going around in A, putting the wash on, and more so getting the wash off. My recommendation with taking the wash off would be, when you think you're all done, put it down for 5 to 10 minutes, come back, and I almost guarantee you'll spot somewhere where you've missed. The amount of times I've been mid 2K and seen a spot I've missed and been like, damn, I've lost count of. So put it down to one side. It takes about half an hour to dry. Once you're happy, you can come back in. If the wash is still slightly damp, uh, I find grabbing a bit of kitchen paper and just getting the most of it off uh, will do the job just fine. So it's a case of just gently going around. Be careful with kitchen paper on this kind of paint. While the paint's very strong, um, the abrasiveness of the kitchen paper on corners can very easily burn through the paint. So bear that in mind when you're doing this and don't be too rough. So I'm just going around. And taking off all the excess wash that's there that hasn't quite dried on the body. And then we can come back in with a cotton bud to be more precise. With some odorless mineral spirits on. And get rid of any parts that are a little bit tricky to get to. So we just rub it over very gently. Again, the mineral spirits is mineral based, hence the name. So it doesn't interfere with the lacquer. But like I say, if you're too rough on raised parts, the friction will take the paint off. So I go over it with the cotton bud with the sand store on, then grab our piece of kitchen paper again and just gently wipe it off. And there we go. This is the next day. We're in the spray booth. Um, we've got some water and we're wetting down all the booth. I've got a fresh filter in, fresh paper down. I've got my plastic storage tub to the left. My AS300 booth is on, extracting everything away. I'm double gloved. My left arm is covered. I've got my full face respirator on and I'm in the room on my own. We've got ProScale Paints 2K paint system, clear coat, and this is a two to one part of clear to hardener. So if you say putting in 10 milliliters of clear there, you then need five milliliters of activator here. So that'd be two 2.5 mil pipettes worth. So be as precise as you can. Do not contaminate the pipettes in the other solutions. The pipettes are one use only, throw them away then. Because if you contaminate one with another, you will ruin the set. So like I say, 10 mil of clear, 5 mil of activator going in. There we go. Make sure that pipette is fully emptied. And we'll pop the lid back in our activator and put it safely out of the way. There we go. And then we'll mix this together to get the chemical reaction going, get the catalyst going. And then we'll throw the pipette away. And never ever use it again. I use this black tray underneath so I can see the markings on the medicine cup for the first pour. And then we need 0.5% of thinner. So we've got a 15 milliliter combined mix. We need 0.75 milliliters of thinner for this. So we'll pop that in, get that out of the way, give the mix a good mix again, like so. Throw a pipette away, never use again. Then we've got a 190 micron paint strainer, a fresh medicine cup, and we're going to strain this through. And the only reason I strain is the activator can sometimes dry on the lid of the bottle, and it does dry quite crispy. So if you get anything fall back into the bottle, that will get rid of it. Our body is uh, being dusted off with a Tamiya anti-static brush. We've got our Iwata CR Revolution. This is a 0.5 revolution this time. This is my 2K only brush. So it's got a bit of a wider pattern, lays down a bit more paint, and we're going to pop down a semi-wet 
uh, first coat. So we're not trying to get a gloss. We're just laying down a nice semi-wet gloss finish. Again, pay attention to all those nooks and crannies, wheel arches, sills everywhere. We're just being systematic to go around the whole body. Like so. Laying down a nice wet coat. So very forgiving R2K. It really, really is. I've been playing around with uh, thinning ratios, and I'll talk about it in the next build because I think I pretty much perfected um, the ratio. We recommend 0.5 mil uh, percent of thinner for all the coats. I think doing the first two coats with that ratio and then add another 10% for the last coat is the key to doing this. Uh, so I've been trying and testing, flip-flopping around with the ratios, and yeah, I think that way is definitely the best. So you'll see it best on my Torino that's coming up, the 74 Torino. Um, but yeah, for me, that is definitely the best way to go. And I think I do it on the Porsche that's coming up. I'm building Alpha Models Porsche as well. Uh, but yeah, I just thought I'd play around with the ratios a bit and see if we can get the best out of this as we can. So that is basically our first semi-wet coat down. We're just making sure it's nice and even all over. Like I say, we're not going for that high gloss look to begin with. We're just trying to get a nice even coat. You can see how much it starts to darken that paint and the reflections actually start to white out my cameras a little bit and alter the contrast, darken it up a lot. But there we go, once we're happy with that, we'll pop it into our protective uh, clear plastic container to the left and then we'll paint all the other parts at the same time so we've got door handles and the lower parts of the mirrors as well now obviously these are smaller parts they don't need as heavy a coat of paint it's very easy to flood smaller parts so just bear that in mind when you're painting them and again once these are done they'll be popped back in that box allowed to flash off for just five minutes of r2k and there we go so we're back second coat on this one i'm going to thin this one a bit more uh, like i said i've been playing with the ratios so into a new medicine cup to see how much of the mixture we still have and we're going to fit thin it a further 10 percent so if you've got another 12 mil of combined thin uh, clear and activator left we're going to add in 1.2 milliliters of thinner now while this does work i think the way i've just said works better do the first two coats with the 0.5 percent thinner and the final one with the 10 percent like I said, I was experimenting here for you guys. Uh, better doing on my own models than yours. Uh, I think the way I'm doing it in the next two builds coming up after this is definitely the better way. Either way, you're still going to have a great clear coat. I'm just trying to get the optimum clear coat I can. So we're ready again. Just a quick test spray through. There we go. And we're going to put down near enough the exact same kind of clear coat we did on the first one. So we're just going for... A nice even gloss coat. We're not trying to get it perfect on this pass. I think just doing another pass like this, popping it back in our plastic bot for 60 seconds or so, come back, have a look, let the 2K self level, and then applying a very light third coat is the best way to get the best out of our 2K. It leaves a much thinner 2K coat behind, and you can see that when polishing because all the panel lines are still... Um, there basically every 2k i've used in the past has filled all the panel lines on the cars on ours it doesn't and while that's great uh it does mean the polish will have you get stuck in them and you have to clean it out when you're polishing the body up but i'd rather do that and have a nice thin clear coat than it looking really thick and toy like so it is beneficial and like i say you do end up with a much more realistic clear coat now unfortunately we do get a little bit of dust on this but we can polish that out later it is the downside of clear coating. Any dust will land in there, and it's highly visible. We're going to get a couple of nice spots right in that bonnet there now. You can see my wet coat going down. So overlapping wet coats, just slightly overlap your previous coat, and then using the light to your advantage, just angle the body until you can see everywhere that you've got. Once we're happy, like I say, we'll just pop it back in here for 60 to 90 seconds, while we clear the other parts. That way the 2K self levels, every time you spray a bit of 2K on, it will naturally self level due to gravity. 
So putting it in there for that 60 to 90 seconds will help it level out a little bit more and you may not even need any more clear coat. But with those done, we get the body back out and have a look. And uh, yeah, it needs a little bit more. So we'll just go over it again. Don't be afraid to push this. You want this to look crystal clear and smooth as you're finished airbrushing because how you leave it when you're airbrushing is how it's going to dry. So if it has orange peel or imperfections, it's going to dry like that. So this is your chance to get rid of it. Don't be afraid to push the clear coat a little bit. It is very, very forgiving. It's by far the most forgiving 2K I've used, and I've used a lot over the years. So just don't be afraid to push it a bit further than you think. You'll put more and more on thinking, oh my God, that's a lot. And you'll come back when it's dry and think, wow, that really does not look that thick at all. Uh, no issues at all. And yeah, don't be afraid to push it. I see a lot of people that seem to be scared by 2K. As long as you follow this health and safety, which I've gone through, having a good extractor, uh, covering your skin up as much as possible, having a good respirator, uh, most important of all, being in the room alone. Don't be with pets or family members. And when you're done, leave the room to let it naturally off-gas by itself. Don't sit in the room while it off-gasses. Uh, but there we go, third coat. Looking very good. I don't tend to count this as a third coat. It's like coat 2.5 because I'm putting two semi-wet coats down rather than a semi-wet and a full wet. And like I say, I think just giving it that 90 seconds in the uh, the box just to sit and chill and self-level gives a much thinner, better finish. It's a shame about the dust spots on the bonnet, but there's not much we can do about it. But just look how much it's dark in that uh, purple up to the camera. It really has made it look a lot darker. Like I say, use the light to your advantage. Angle the body to get a good look. If you can see any ripples, any orange peel, give it a little bit more 2K. Don't be afraid to put a bit more on. Obviously, there is a point where it will run. I've yet to hit that point, and I've put a lot down on there. So, yeah, just don't be afraid to push it. Keep going until you've got that flawless glass-like finish. Once you're happy, get it back in that box as quick as you can. And within four or five hours of 20 degrees plus centigrade, uh, it will be dry. It will be touch dry. So I thought today I'd leave in my cleaning regime here. So once we're done with everything, everything's in that plastic box to the left safe. First round, I put some of the 2K thinner in there just to clear it all out. I'm actually spraying it into a um, piece of kitchen paper. I've then got a larger 60 ml uh, medicine cup filled with our uh, paint thinner and uh, cleaner. I've got a little bit of uh, cleaner on our brush, on our a brush, sorry, and clean the nozzle of the airbrush. And the color cup lid's in there, the nozzle's in there. I'm going to drop the needle nozzle in there itself. And then what I tend to do is dip the color cup in, load it with 2K, pull it back out. It's already had a good blast through with thinners, so it should have cleared like 90% of anything out of there. I just let it trickle out, let it pee out into the cup a couple of times. We'll give that colour cup a quick wipe over as well. And what I'll tend to do is, I vacate the room for a few hours, I will just leave the airbrush sat like this. So it's nowhere near the air valve, it won't damage the airbrush at all. I've been doing this for years with airbrushes, but it will allow it to soak and break down any 2K that's in there. And when I come back, I reassemble and blast it through. And there we go, there's our clear coat. Beautiful, you can see the lovely metallic flakes in the body catching the really powerful lights over my bench. And that's it, we're going to leave that there today for part one. We'll be back in part two to continue this fantastic build. Thanks for watching today, take care, bye-bye.